Well, let's do some forecasting. Uh, we're in the middle of this thing right now. And uh, I'm sure um, as you listen to uh, Bloomberg or uh, uh, whatever uh, source of uh, or whatever outlet you get your uh, business news from, even uh, just on uh, YouTube, uh, different commentators on YouTube, putting out prognostications of how everything's going to change. And I've heard forecasts of, uh, you know, this is the end of the office. This is the end of the mall. Retail is going to change. Uh, the restaurant industry is going to change. There's a bunch of jobs that are lost that are never coming back. Uh, it's going to change the way business is done. There's going to be online meetings. Business travel is going to die. I have heard so many predictions about how everything is going to change. And of course, those two uh, terrible words are showing up again. The new normal. How many times have we heard uh, the new normal? Um, we've heard this before. We, we've heard uh, it, it many times throughout history when events happen, how this is going to change everything. Uh, and it never does. Uh, it, it gives us more choices than we had before. It opens up new avenues, but it never really changes anything. Human nature is uh, deeply and profoundly habitual and deeply and profoundly social. Uh, here's a good uh, question to ask yourself. You've all been at home. Um, do you like it? Are you dying to get out? Are you, are you dying to get back in the mall to get out on the streets to meet people? I'm absolutely certain the answer is yes. And the reason is, I think, we've all discovered is home is not where we live. We live out there. We live in the world. We come home to take a break. We come home to sleep, to eat, etc. But we don't live at home. We slowly die. Uh, we slowly suffocate. Uh, we don't want to spend that much time with the same group of people every single day. We want novelty. We crave novelty. We have to get out. There's a reason why being put in a room all day long is called prison, okay? Is because it goes against the very thing we want to do, which is get out there. So as soon as you open up those doors, are humans going to get out there? Yes, they are. They're dying to get out there. Uh, this will pass. Like anything else, this will pass. Sure, we've got to take precautions for now, which is the smart thing to do. Uh, and... Um, in time, there will be a virus, uh, a virus, there'll be a, a, a vaccine for this virus. And I guarantee you there'll be a group of people out there saying, I'm not taking a vaccine. It's going to cause autism. You'll still have that group of people who won't do that. Nothing will change. To um, sort of put this in, in terms of uh, uh, financial market terminology, human behavior is extremely mean reverting. So let me give you some examples. 1999-2000, uh, the dot-com boom. This was going to change everything. If you were, uh, you know, uh, my age back then, like I think late, uh, late 90s, I was, uh, you know, early 30s. Uh, so I can remember the commentary at the time. Retail, this is going to change the way we do retail. Malls are going to disappear. I remember that was a big thing. Malls are going to disappear. They're going to be replaced by virtual malls. You can go shopping in a mall online. Everything that you could buy was showing up online. Uh, there was a Toys R Us version online. I forget what it was called, but it wasn't Toys R Us, but you could buy all the toys you ever wanted online. What do you need Toys R Us for? Amazon showed up. What do you need bookstores for? Uh, you could buy your clothes online, you could buy, your, you could order your food online, it would be like everything, yeah, grocery stores, everything was online and that came crumbling down and since 1999 to 2019, we have even more malls, we have even more retail stores uh, than we had at the time when everyone was predicting, what do we need bricks and mortar for? It'll be clicks, not bricks. I don't know if you remember that expression. Clicks, not bricks. And it didn't change everything. It simply just added to the way we buy, but it didn't change the way we buy, nor did it change that we bought. I think of higher education when radio 
first showed up. This is going to change everything because now we people students don't have to come to a building we can just the university would have a radio station and would broadcast out its lectures that was going to change everything and it didn't television that was going to change education that was going to change everything because you just had to sit at home and watch your lecture on the tv it was going to change everything and uh, it didn't and again, the internet revolution, this is going to change everything. We're not going to have universities and colleges anymore. Everyone will take it online. And it didn't happen. More campuses were built. Uh, more student housing, more student dormitories were built that were almost like condos with swimming pools and everything. More was built. It added to the way we got education, but it did not replace education. Uh, so I see the same thing happening here is uh, we are in, uh, and if you think about uh, mean reverting, let me uh, sort of just draw out uh, a, an equilibrium path. There's human nature, and there's the path of human nature. And of course, it does this at the micro and the macro level. Um, you could say dot com was an overshoot. Here we are with an undershoot is that we're all retreated into our homes and that's gonna change everything and here's where we're gonna stay. It's just an overshoot and an undershoot. This is the mean reverting level. Behavior is mean reverting. We're going to go back to the way we've always done things. Office buildings are not disappearing. Uh, businesses are not canceling their leases. Malls are not disappearing. Uh, they're not going to be empty ghost towns. Now, are some businesses going to decide that they can go online and don't need a location? Sure. Are others deciding that, you know what, we need more room, we need more space, off we go? Sure. Are new businesses going to form that need office space? Sure. Are existing businesses going to die and go away? Sure. That's the micro level. The micro level of human behavior and, and human interaction has lots of volatility and lots of variability. But when you get to the macro level, all of that cancels out. Here's a good example. In the U.S. every year, millions of people move from city to city. Millions of people move from city to city. Uh, and some people who drove a little now drive a lot. Some people who drove a lot drove a little. But if you look at the total miles driven in the U.S. year to year, it's almost fairly constant. Here's another good example. 2018, 30.2 million small businesses in the U.S. Uh, 2019, same number, 30.2 million, but 20% turnover. Entrance and exits, lots of change, lots of change, fairly constant. Fairly constant in terms of uh, uh, quantity and fairly constant in terms of number of employment. The other thing I'm hearing uh, is 30% of businesses are not going to reopen. Those jobs are gone. No, they're not. They're not gone. Uh, they're going to be replaced by other firms entering the industry. These firms that are disappearing are in industries with very low barriers to entry. The restaurant industry, for example. I think they're in the last, uh, last number I saw for 2019, because we have nothing for 2020, uh, was uh, 660,000 restaurants, food serving establishments in the US, 660,000. Uh, with huge turnover, 17% turnover of those exiting and those coming in. So if 30% disappear, that's less than two years of startups. You don't think there are going to be startups? Are startups going to end? No. Um, the one unique thing about North American capitalism that I don't think you get anywhere else in the world, uh, it, is, it is really distinct to North America, is the ease uh, of social and economic mobility. Through, through, the, uh, uh, through the socioeconomic state, uh, um, uh, strata in society. Uh, mobility is incredible, more so than in many other countries. Don't bet against that. Uh, those jobs are not gone. They're simply going to be with somebody else. So one establishment fails in a particular uh, uh, city. Well, it's already set up as a restaurant. Somebody else will come along and say, well, I'll take it and they'll rehire people. Maybe not the same people, but they'll rehire people. Those jobs are not gone. Uh, if you go back into the 70s 
and uh, you tell me these textile jobs that are leaving for South America and Vietnam and Bangladesh, they're gone. I'll agree with you. Yeah, those jobs are going and they're not coming back. I agree with you. But these jobs, they're not gone. The establishments may be leaving, but new establishments come back in. So let's not forget about firm formation, especially uh, at the small business level. Um, that will pick up. If you have a clean out of 30% of the businesses in specific industries, that is ripe for new entrants to come in. A lot of retailers are declaring bankruptcy. Yeah, uh, but every year you have retailers that are declaring bankruptcy. Uh, so you look at the mall and you say, well, all of those will disappear. Well, that's the same thing every year. Go to any mall, oh, stores disappear. Uh, if it's an A mall, you know what they have? A lineup. You don't see the lineup. Go up to the corporate office and say, do you have a waiting list for spaces? Yeah, we do. What's going to happen is the people on the waiting list, in you go. So some big box stores are going to disappear. Do you know what competes with big box stores and what's had a very difficult time finding space? Gyms. When a gym goes into a mall, it has to compete with those retailers. Well, now if, if big box stores are disappearing, I guarantee you're gonna see more gyms start up. That firm formation is going, to, is going to fill the void. So, no, I don't think those jobs are disappearing. Here's what I predict in two years. In two years, we'll be doing exactly what we were doing six months ago. Uh, we'll remember this and some people will have changed their behaviors and some people will not have changed their behavior so at the micro level you'll have a lot of volatility and variability but at the macro level it'll be the same we'll be in two years doing exactly what we were doing six months ago remembering this not living it just remembering it remember when remember when we did this remember when we did that in 10 years uh, from now there'll be uh, more malls there'll be more office space, there'll be more offices, there'll be more small businesses, there'll be more employment among small businesses. Um, new stadiums will be built with smaller seats. Airlines will still be figuring out how to cram more people on the flights and how to charge you for absolutely everything you do. Remember, just before this went bad, how airlines treated you? Not very well. You wanna, oh, you wanna bring luggage on vacation? That's new, 20 bucks per bag. You want to use the bathroom? Three bucks each time. You want a beer? It's eight dollars and we're going to give you half. They charged you for everything. They'll be right back at it. They'll be right back at it charging you and nickel and diming you. They'll forget about your generosity, the taxpayer's generosity and the government's generosity for getting them through this. They'll forget all about it and they'll be right back to nickel and diming you. Movie theaters will still have lineups on premiere nights for good movies and they'll be packed the gym on Monday night from 7 to 9 will be packed and that guy, that guy who just leans on a machine and has conversations with people, he'll be back. Now, he's not using the machine, but he's not going to let you use it because he's between sets. You know that guy. You know, after a certain amount of time, you're not doing sets anymore, Randy. Uh, but he'll be back. Everything will be back to the way it was because we are mean reverting in our behavior we are deeply and profoundly patterned and habitual. If we weren't, if we weren't, we would all be physically fit. We would all be healthy. We would all be well-dressed, well-educated. We would all be perfect because all of our New Year's resolutions would have stuck. All of them. Um, every year, people make New Year's resolutions. And by the 10th or 11th of January, they're right back to where they were. This is the year I quit smoking. Except for the first weekend they go out, well, okay, only when I have a drink I'll smoke. Only when I'm drinking. And this is the year I quit drinking. Except when they're out with friends. Well, I'll just have one. I'll, I'll only drink on Friday nights. And they make deals with themselves. And by the middle of the month, they're right back at it. Because uh, they are mean reverting. They are habitual. So as far as, uh, let's tie this to um, investments right now. Negative on mall REITs, negative on office REITs. And I think office REITs are, are, are my first one that I would pick. Uh, I'm very bullish on office REITs at these valuations right now. Uh, at the prices that I'm seeing uh, for office REITs, I'm all in. 
Um, businesses have long-term leases. You don't get to just walk away from that. If you're going to continue to exist and you think, well, we'll just exist virtually, uh, there are penalties for walking away from a lease. Uh, most of the time, you have to continue to pay the lease till the end. Uh, and from where we're standing now, businesses may say, but everyone's working remotely, that's fine. Well, great, but how did I start this? Do you like being at home? Do you like being in your home all day long? That's a prison cell, basically, because you don't live there. You live outside. You want to go to the office. So, sure, you can have people work at home, but do they want to? They need that interaction. They need that novelty. Offices are not going away. This one may decide to work at home, but this one is going to decide not to. This one will work at home for a while, but then come back. All of them are going to keep their leases because they have to till the end of the term. So even if they make the decision that they're all gonna work from home now, they may still have three years on their lease. Longer term tenants, big tenants that have three, four floors of an office building have 15, 20 year leases. They're not going anywhere. That cash flow is not going anywhere. This is just some volatility on our way back to mean reversion. That's all it is. So I'm a, 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 a big buyer of office reach right now. Mall retail REITs, yeah, I think in about six months, seven months, that'll be the time to step in. I want to see more bankruptcies right now. I want a little bit more negativity in there about how everything is going to change and we're not going to want to go to stores anymore and we're not going to want to go. I want that to build a little bit more because that'll put more downward pressure on the mall REITs. Uh, and then step in. Step in and buy them because they're not going away. And any of those empty stores will be filled with other stores. Uh, so, takeaways here. Um, we are, as a society, as, as, as a group of people, as a population, highly mean reverting. We will revert back to the mean. We have been here, I don't know how many times uh, uh, that I can remember, where it's the new normal and everything is going to change and nothing ever changes. We just end up with a few more options on the other side. Our office is going away? No. Is more flexible work going to be combined with traditional office work? Sure, sure. But that'll be, that'll be something alongside the office, not in replacement of the office. Nothing will change. Um, that's, uh, that's my forecast.